to see. Let's do the gross anatomy grossly first. Let's tell me number three. Number three is in there. Testes. 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 Number four is supposed to be this thing back behind us. Epididymis. Very good. How about number 12 and 13? Prostate. 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 And number 11? How about blue urethral calpers? Either one's fine. And let's do, I don't know, thing 10. What is this big thing? That's a penis. So let's do 7 and 8. <laughs> Oh, corpus uh, cavernosa. That's right, the right the So the top one is the cavernosa, and the eight is the lower one, spongiosa. Very good. But now we're going to zoom in on these and use our lists to name stuff. So here's where life gets. Wait, Mr. Christie? Oh. That number, sorry. So the number eight is not the cavernosa, it is the spongiosa. spongiosa. Then what is, and nine is the urethral. Then what is six? Spongiosa also glands. So, okay. 6A is the the pupa. So pupa K or foreskin. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's chop his wiener off right there. Aww. Sad clown. Aww. All right. <laughs> so sad. All right. Let me get these. All right. So let's go through our list. So on this model, it's hard to see, but there's two tunicas to a testis and a scrotum. If you look at this side, and you have to look at the real model to see it. There's a membrane under the skin before the testis. What tunica is between your skin and your testis? Vaginalis. Vaginalis. The men have a vagina. It means the pooch in. So your tunica vaginalis pooches in. A is actually on another tunica. The white part is your what? Albuginia. Albuginia, because alba is white. A rocky mountain oyster is the white part, right? So albuginia is the white of the testis, vaginalis surrounds that. And if you look at the model closely, you'll see there's layers in there. What would I find if I were to cut into a testis? What would be in there? Seminiferous tubules. Seminiferous tubules. So let's do that. Let's slide our way into a testis. Move back. This one. Ah! My mouse is working. Sorry. It's a white testis. So if you look carefully, and again, this is on a big screen, if you look inside the testis, you'll see a bunch of coiled tubes. Those are the seminiferous tubules. What do you call the little white boxes the tubes are living in, or the groups of tubes? A lobule, like in your lung. So the lobules are the, like the white boxes, separated by septa. The tubes are the tubes inside the boxes. Then you have number four, <coughs> classic thing on a question. There's a little spot between three and four that makes a little net. Right there. Reti testis. Reti testis or reti. Remember reticular was netted way back when? Right. So that's your rete or reticula right there. That's between number three and number four. You'll see on most of the models there'll be a netted button looking thing. Then we have scrotum. Okay. So we're going to do two different views of scrotum. Scrota? Scrotang? That's that one. Okay, and this guy. Look at number 11. That red thing is a muscle. Which muscle is that? That's my cremaster. It's your joke now. So the cremaster is the hammock or sling that pulls the scrotum toward the body. So it's going to go for temperature control. So that's the cremaster. But there's another one, Mr. Dartos, which is not shown on this one at all. Not easily. I'm going to do this one. Okay, this one, the cremaster, is the one they cut here. That would pull us up. But if you look carefully, there's a, it's hard to see on the screen, but there's a dashed red line right outside of that, in the skin. That would be the dartos. We call it the wrinkler. That's what makes the scrotum get all crinkly when it pulls up. So the cremaster lifts, the dartos crinkles. But there are two muscles in the scrotum. Make sense? Is the master actually lifting the scrotum, or is it actually lifting the testis? It's actually lifting the tunica, and the tunica is around the testis, so it yes to both yeah. kind of question. Gotcha. Okay, let's find our epididymis on top of your twin. Let's go back. This one here. Okay, so B is the epididymis. It's head, body, tail should be pretty self-explanatory. Then there's going to be a tube that goes up this way. What tube would that be that pops out as number 15? Vast deference or ductus deference, same thing. Okay? So we're going to follow that tube around. So let's 
come around back. That tube's number 15 is going to go around the bladder, join this other stuff which is later in the list, and then start heading down. So we're going to zoom in there. And you're going to go back to last two weeks ago, and we're going to name the tube it's in. So it's going to come out basically number 20. What is number 20? Ejaculatory duct. Ejaculatory duct. So it comes around the bladder, then it ejaculates to here. Then we're in this tube, which is the urethra. But what urethra is that in the male? And that one? Membrane. And that one? Squee! All right. So do you already remember those? Now we're going to go back and name some of those other parts we glossed over. Go back to my front view. So if you put everything together, number 15, the plumbing, all that, what is that whole structure called? Cord. Spermatic cord. Spermatic cord is everything between your scrotum and your body, basically. What are some things that are in there? Hint, hint, classic exam question. Gonadal artery, gonadal veins. Vein and artery, gonadals, those are the red and blues. And nerves. Nerves, gonadal nerves, and the vas deferens. So even though on this model you can only see kind of in general what's there, make sure you can list the things that are in the spermatic cord. That's the wiring and plumbing for the... Scrotum. Then we're going to do our glands again. So what's that gland behind your body? It looks like a funny acorn or honeycomb or something. What's that one? Seminal vesicle. So it's like a honeycomb or whatever. So that's seminal vesicle. That comes first. And then this one, number F, is prostate. And then on some of the models, they don't show this one. But 21. What's 21? Bulbal urethral or Cowper's or synonyms. Right. The best model in town actually is what we affectionately call blue balls, the giant blue ones. Take a picture of those in your phone. They're very clear on the plumbing as you go through the mail. They're the best model in town, so those big blue ones. You want to spend some time on, but this works. Then we're going to go through our penis. Okay. What do you call the spot I'm pointing here? What specific part of your penis is that? Glands. Glands. Glands, penis, or glands. Does this one have any foreskin? No. no. Let's find out. No, he does not. He just has a gland. He's uncircumcised. But some of our models do have a foreskin. I know. Oh, too far. For example, this one has a gland 6 and a foreskin 6A. So on your test, make sure you know if he's been circumcised or not before you say one or the other, because you'll get it wrong. Right? But he has a foreskin 6A. So where's the root of a penis? Kind of before that membrane. Inside the body. Inside the body. Think of a tree. It's what's under the ground. If you can't grab it, it's a root. So between here in, all that's root. All right? So therefore, where's the bulb? Ten. Ten. The bulb is the base of the root. Because your bulb or your urethral is on the bulb. So the root's internal. The bulb is the bottom. You can't see the crus, but there's these little legs that stick out sideways. So... Look at it in the picture, but it's not something you can see on the model. The shaft, we all get. That's the part you can touch. Erectile tissues, we got. Right? So do okay on the male macro stuff. Let's do some histology while we're, while we're looking. Let's go to J-Doc, shall we? Here's a testis, kind of big. Um, so how do I know that's a testis? Well, I see the little lobules in the rooms. You can see the reti. I can see a rete, a rete <coughs> here, basically. And I can see the little coiled tubes inside of them. That's what a test would look like, I guess. You said the rete is netted. Is yeah. something inside the net? Yeah, basically it's anything about here. And so what it is looks that good. Tissue? Still the tubules, or yeah, basically the, the tubes coil and they begin to merge together, but it looks netted. Okay. It's the same. Basically, you're transitioning from this to that. Is there a word for the connection between the lobule and the retina? I'm sure there is. I don't know what it is. I'm sure there is. Right. Well, let's name some stuff. Ooh, I see a layer on the outside of my testis. What would you call this tunica on the testis itself? 
Albuginia. That's the tunica albuginea because it's on the outside of the testis. The vaginalis would be outside of that. That's your tunica albuginea. It's always the white of the testis. Let's zoom in on our testis. So, on lab, <coughs> when you get a slide, which you will, you want to be able to say that you know the gland or whatever. So that's a testis. How would I know that's a testis? How, what do you see that tells you this is probably tubules, tubules. And Lots of tubules. So, so a, 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 a testis will have lots and lots of circles all over the place. These are the seminiferous tubules. And what you want to do in your head is look at the circles and identify how many cells make up the circle. Right? So if you look at each circle, how many layers of cells between the outside and the center would you say an average? Nine. Lots or one? Lots. 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 So seminiferous tubules are going to have multiple layers of cells as you go from the outside of the tube toward the center. And in the center you'll see tails of the sperm. Okay? That's going to help you see the difference between that slide and the next one I'm going to show you, which also has tubes. Here's a tube. Is that a testis tube? No. no. How do you know it's not a testis? Because it doesn't have any layers. It just has one layer, right? So one difference you want to catch on to is how the tubes look different. This is an epididymis. So it has tubes, but they're a different shape and number of cells. <coughs> but you want to kind of notice this, this, the round tube. So let's go back to testis. Are those little sperms in there? Those are little spermies in there, yes. <coughs> so in a testis, you have lots of circles. There are multiple cells per ring. You'll see the tails pointing in the center, and they're pretty closely put together. They're mostly round. They're not always round, but they're mostly kind of roundish. Right? So you're going to see, yes? All that white space that was in the epididymis uh, tubule, like, is that just room for storage? Yes. Okay. That's firm. But inside your testis, it tells me you're supposed to know some things. So let's do that. And you're going to focus on the cells that are in here. So we're going to zoom in. Here's one seminiferous tubule. What you want to do in your head is go from the outside in. So, the cells on the outside, like these ones, what do you think their job is? From lecture, you learned this last week. Blood sperm barrier. Blood because that's where we make the sperm, right? So, what kind of cell would they be if they're going to make or generate sperm? You can say spermatogonia, you can say spermatogenic, you can say sperm mother cell, stem um, cell, stem cell. Yeah. they're all basically synonymous with each other. But the cells in the ring are making the sperm and shoving them down the tube. Right? So these ones on the outer part of the ring are going to be your spermatogenic, spermatogonia, whatever you want. Okay. Now... Take a look at this cell right here. If you notice, it's not round. It's kind of strange looking. Here's one that just like it. That seem to be stretching down multiple layers. Sustenacular? Sustenacular or nurse cells. That's a cell to help the other cells. They don't make sperm. They feed and clothe and nourish and congratulate and give stickers to sperm. Oh. <laughs> Those are sertoles or sustentacular cells. Then you will look at these cells right here. What layer of the circle are these ones in? Interstitial. They're not in the circles, so they're interstitial or Leydig cells. So the ones outside the circles are named differently than the ones in the circle. Right. For your viewing pleasure, since I don't think you noticed this, we have a beautiful poster over here that I would recommend you take a picture of with your phone at some point in your college career by next week. Because this will highlight all those differences I just taught you on the screen. This will save you on your exam. So make sure you take a picture of the poster. Right? But let's zoom in some more. Do the Leydig cells secrete testosterone? Yes, they do. That's where the hormone comes from. So the spermatogenics are doing sperm, and the Leydig are doing basically hormones. So on this picture, one spermatogenic tubule. Name this cell. Spermato 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 Spermato
about this funny looking kind of cell here? Look here. He's that's weird. Just, just yeah. that's, a, that's the nursing yeah. cell. Yeah. Search the yeah. How about how about this cell yeah. way over here? Yeah. Interstitial. Interstitial or late egg, sure. So you want to get your visual, if you're looking at the circle, then naming cells within or without. Well, right? So that's, that's those. But you said we can call them their cells. Being right, they're all same. So late, uh, Sertoli or Sustentacular or Leydig are all the same. I'm sorry, Sertoli, Nurse, and Sustentacular. Leydig, and they all have multiple names. Just pick one of them. That's fine. Right? So then let's do... Let's do... Epididymis. So let's do the epididymis. I'll do them in the order of the sperm, not the list. So how do I know that's not a testis? It doesn't have the layers. It doesn't have as many layers. There's only like maybe one or two versus like 12. Not as crammed together. Yeah. Notice that they're funny shapes. This is like a oval, right? It's a large like empty space. Right, big empty space. So you want to lose all those clues and know that this is not a testis anymore, Dorothy. Is an epididymis. We still have circles, but they're different looking circles. So, let's zoom in on our epididymis. Here's another view. So, there are lots of circles, but they're not as busy as circles. They're different shapes. They seem to have bigger white space. You know, lumen. One more. So, if this were on a test and I were to point to something, you'd have to tell me what these funny looking shapes you see around here are. Sperm. Stereocilia. Stereocilia, PCC, ciliated epithelium, whatever word you want to throw at me. But those are the cilia to help push the sperm out of school toward where they go. Right? So, what are these things in the center then, Smarty? Those are the sperm, right? They have tails and all that. If you look carefully, there's a little red line right about here and there. What is that red line, pray tell? Smooth muscle. So we're mostly using cilia, but we also have some smooth muscle in there. Right? But again, that's a very different looking circle than the testis circle. Right? So let's keep going. Let's find a ductus deferens, or a vast deferens. And the way you're going to tell that on a test is look at that muscle. Right? Lots of muscle. Why would it need muscle? Contract the squirt sperm, right? So all you got to do is be able to see that and say vast difference. Now, usually this is kind of a star shape, but it doesn't have to be. The trick is there's a lot of muscle ringing that tooth. You squeeze the sperm. I'll show you that I'm not making this up much. Here's another view. Again, lots of muscle. Solid tube. Yeah, just... Here's the center, but that's not going to help you much. You want to look at the muscle. So on the slide, if you saw that, you say, hey, I see lots of muscle. That's a vast deferens. Walk away. That's all you got to do. Make sense? Or ductus deferens. So what do you think a seminal vesicle would look? Oh, yeah, yes. So we don't need to know the, diff the three layers of no. the smooth muscle, just that it's multiple layers of smooth, smooth muscle. That's what it is. Yep. Yeah, your list, all you got to do is know the, point, uh, the, the organ, so vast difference. <laughs> let's see, let's do a seminal vesicle. What do you think it would look like based upon the models? Lots of fluid. Lots of columnar. White space. Looks like a sponge or a honeycomb. A sponge. Because the, the things you see on the models are trying to represent this look. It looks like a sponge, honeycomb, I don't know, some kind of abstraction. <laughs> but you're going to see lots and lots of these funny looking, spongy looking things. So what do you call those spongy looking things formally? Mucosal folds, because they're full of mucus. It looks like a dolly baby. Sure. Whatever will get you there. And so, hey, I see a little bit of red stuff right here. I wonder what that red line could be. Huh. Smooth muscle again. But you're going to see lots of folds. Looks honeycomb, looks spongy, whatever you want. It looks like the models have on them. Right? I think, oh, forgot my last slide. How could I forget my last slide? Now, unfortunately, J Doc does a crummy penis. That comes out long enough. I'm going to get you a different penis here. Hold on. Give me a second to go to Boston. We need one that works. 
I'm going to let that for fun and just slide okay. on out my ears. I like that that's on the video now. Yes, it's forever marked. I, I have to class for people who are strangers. Go to Boston. There's a classic penis. So, let's figure out what you're supposed to know about said penis. Well, I think you're supposed to name the parts. So, let's name the parts. Let's do the, the eyeballs of my clown. What they call it? Cavernosa. The Capora Cavernosa. The mouth of said clown. Spongiosa. Or the spongiosa. The urethra, you know. What kind of tissue is the eye and the mouth made out of? Rectal tissues. Rectal But what physically on your list would be a place you could sponge fluid? On your list, see anything that might represent a sponge or a space? Venous cavities. Venous cavities. So in English, these are the venous cavities. You also see them called spongy cavities, rectal cavities, rectal sponge, pick a word. But this is where the blood fills. Right. And then, let's figure out, what do you call this round thing here and that round thing there? Arteries. The arteries are deep arteries. So the arteries are in the deep part of the eye. We've got the veins up in the forehead. But these are the cavernous bodies. Now, one more word. What do you call this wrapping tissue that goes around the eye, around the eye, around the mouth? What is that layer? Tunica. Tunica, Tunica albuginea, one more time. So you're going to use the same language from the test piece. Make so sense? can you show that again? Tunica yeah. albuginea? Basically, it's this red. All the dark purple. That's the fibrous bands that separate the. And then vaginalis and stuff around that. You don't have a vaginalis in your penis. Yeah. Oh, right. You just have an albuginia. Vaginalis in the testis, but not there. What is around all of that? Uh, basically, this is called the superficial fascia, which is another wrapper. And then this is basically dense. Is it irregular? I want to say irregular. No, irregular. It's dense something. Don't quote me which one. And then skin. So it's basically just skin on top of a fascia on top of a bunch of blood. Why aren't there any deep arteries in the spongiosum? Because you have the urethra there instead. So you use smaller arteries. There's not the big ones. They're in there. There's not. Label. Make sense? Okay, let's do girly parts. Okay. Yay. It, it, the sponge and has the, uh, the venous cavities too, right? Yes, all of them. Let's start with 19. Mons pubis. Let's do number one. Labia. Majora, right? Number two. Minora. Very good. 17. Clitoris. Very good. So then, which numbers would be your vestibule? Good lecture question, isn't it? Yeah, well, what was your vestibule again? The bottom of the vaginal. Oh. Right, the entrance or opening, right? <coughs> that would be menorah 2, clitoris 17, vaginal orifice number 3. Basically, everything inside the labia menorah is vestibular. Right? So, perineum, it says. Where's that at? The perineum. 19 anus, which your anus is missing, but it's over here. Right? So, everything in your crotch would be perineum. Let's do... How about tube number 3? The vagina. Be based on how many people point to this one and say it's a vagina. No, that's a urethra. Babies don't come out of there. They come out of this one. But make sure on the girl models you figure out which tube you have. Some of them have the anus on there, so you have three. Some have no anus, so you have only two. So it sounds stupid and simplistic, but make sure you know which tube you're pointing at on the test. Right? So three is the vaginal orifice. So what, what's 16 again then? Urethra. Urethra. Okay, so then we're going to zoom up to number 5 and 6. What is 5 and 6? 5 is the cervix. 5 is the cervix, so 6 must be the... Endometrium. Oh, that's the uterus. That's the uterus, very good. So then we're going to go back to 4. 4 is a division between your vagina and your cervix. Those little V's there. Anterior and posterior fornices. Very good, those are your fornices. So... 
On this one, this would be the anterior. This is the posterior. Though there's two laterals that you can't see from the slide. So then tell me what about this hole right here that I'm pointing to specifically? Which one? External. External os, because sperm goes in. And this end would be the internal, internal os. os. Hey, I see bumpy things. Rugae. My favorite word always, rugae. All right. Now we're up in the uterus. So name this part. Body. Body. Name the poochy part. Fundus. Fundus, like your stomach. Right? Now we have places that are outside your uterus where it flops over. So, for example, this space here is between your uterus and your bladder. That's a space. What do you call that space? Vesico uterine. Vesico uterine pouch. There's also one back here between your uterus and your large intestine that's not on the screen. Rectouterine pouch. Recto uterine pouch. So the pouches are the outside of the uterus where it flops around, quote, quote. Right? Then we have the endometrium, which I'm going to change models on you here. Get your better endometrium. I think we know. Okay. Guys, look, he doesn't have one. Give me a second. I'm going to find you a different one. Okay, so back to where we were. So vesico uterine pouch here, recto uterine pouch there. And if you look at the endometrium, which is the inside of your uterus, you notice there's two colors here. So you got the innermost one, which is what, pinky color? And the outer, the more deep or outer one is the reddish color. So what do you call the pink one only? Stratum functionalis. Stratum functionalis, because that's the functional layer. It's the one that babies implant in, that's when you menstruate. Right? So if you think of your skin as bottom up, that's the logic. Isn't that here. the part that sheds as yes. well? Yes. Okay. And therefore the red one must be the what? Stratum basalis. Remember stratum basali in your skin? Mm -hmm. The one that regenerated? <coughs> Same logic. So the basalis makes the functionalis. The functionalis is what goes out of your body when you menstruate and the baby implants in. Mm -hmm. It's like your skin is still bottom up. On this model that was showing the two, both of those together is the endometrium. So the endometrium is both of those as one. So what do you call then this layer here that it, that is not the endometrium? What's that? Myometrium. Myometrium, muscle of the uterus. <clears throat> All right. So let's. Well, we got this picture up here. What is that thing there? Oh yeah. Yeah, ligament. Yes. No, it's a ligament. Oh yeah. It's a ligament from the other side. Okay, Let's see if I can find this one. That would have been the same thing as number 11 in this picture. What's number 11? Fallopian, Fallopian tube or uterine tube or uterine horn or oviduct. Okay, so then we're supposed to name some things. Listen, my favorite word on a test, short of Rugae, is 11B. What are 11Bs? Fimbrae. Fimbrae, fingers. They're the grabber things for your ovaries. You can hardly tell you can see it. Those are the fingers, right. So what do you think 11A represents then? The infundibulum. Infundibulum. Yeah. Remember the stalk of your brain? Yeah. Right. That's the same logic. The stalk, all that's there. Right? You really can't, the isthmus and ampulla are hard to see on a model externally. So we'll vary over those. <coughs> Let's do nine. What's nine? Ovaries. An ovary. What's that white thing on the outside of it, I wonder? A tunica albuginea. Tunica albuginea, same as a testis. Remember, they're made from the same material. <coughs> they're made the same thing. Now we're going to do the hell of the ligaments. <coughs> this always costs you lots of points on tests, so I don't know any way to make it better. Okay, so what you want to imagine is your uterus is a hammock. Okay? It's just floating in your body like this. And like in a hammock, you have all these strings holding it to the trees, and those are what we call the ligaments. So you're going to have ligaments pointing every direction to keep your uterus one place. So what you're going to visualize in your head is, first off, the yellow stuff you see here. 
That's like a bowl that the uterus is sitting on. And it's kind of wide. So how can we say the wide ligament the uterus is sitting on? Broad, broad. The broad ligament. So this yellow represents the broad ligament. It's what the uterus is sort of sitting on inside your body. So I'm going to show you on this model here visually what I'm meaning. Ooh, you took a part. videotaping it. All right. So here's my uterus. All right. If I look at this part, notice this mem this ligament here, like a bat wing. That's sitting in your body just about like that. So that's the broad ligament. It's what the uterus sort of sits on. And these models is the yellow stuff. Where's my girl? Where's my girl? Ah. So you can't see it, but if you were to look Everything the uterus is sitting on is a broad ligament, okay? So that's your bra. But then if you go back to the screen, you're going to break that down more than once. So let's go back up to the screen. You turn the page over, basically. You see the broad ligament is broken down to three things. So, look at number 13. That's the broad ligament, but it's the part across from or next to my uterus. Which of those three words do you think would be in the middle of the uterus? Mesometrium. Mesometrium. You have endometrium, myometrium, mesometrium. So that's the mesometrium of the broad ligament. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, basically. Now if you notice there's yellow here, this yellow is between my fallopian tube and my ovary. They would know how you'd say uh, fallopian tube removal in medical terminology? Salpingo. Salpingo. So can anyone find a word meaning middle of your fallopian tube? Mesoalpinx. So that's the mesoalpinx of the broad ligament. And this model doesn't show it well, but there's actually a little membrane wrapped around the back of the ovary. How would you say middle of the ovary? Mesoverian. Mesoverian. So the broad ligament has three chunks. Mesometrium. Mesoalpinx, mesovarian. If you look in your lab, you know, they have a very good job of labeling those. Make sure you know the three parts of a broad ligament. The other ones are actually pretty easy. Where was the mesovarian? The meso, which one? Ovarian. You can't see it on the model, but it's around the ovary. You can see these in the picture. Look at number 12. That's a round thing going forward to your pubic bone from your uterus. It's kind of round. What is it? Ligament. That's the round ligament. Pregnant women complain of the round ligament stretching. That's because of that. Right? If you look carefully where number five is not pointing but physically located, there's a ligament right here that go back to your sacrum. How would you say ligament back to your sacrum? Uterosacral. Uterosacral. So you have two rounds going front, two uterosacrals going back, the broads going underneath. That leaves the ovarian ligament for us. Can anyone guess what number up here is an ovarian ligament? Please say number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. That's the ovarian ligament because it holds my ovary to your uterus. The suspensories are not shown in any of the models, but they would hang down and hold your ovaries up, basically. So you give us a picture? I did a word description. Okay. But none of the models show. So if I run through all those, I have a round in the front, Uterosacral in the back, ovarian on the side, broad underneath with the mesometrium, mesoalpinx, and mesovarian. Those are the ligaments of the uterus. Except there's a poster back here that you want to take pictures of as well. Where's my girl? Oh, that's a boy. Could be a girl. Sure. So, this poster will save your soul. So, it has, thank you, it has a very good picture showing the mesoalpinx and all that on here. And by the way, it has a very good vulva picture, not that I'm you know, looking at that, but you want to look at that too and find lady and all that fun stuff from the external view. But this poster has been known to appear on lots of lab quizzes and exams. You know that it shows a lot of the early parts in a good way. Make sure you take a picture of that one. That's what you want to do. So then what we're going to do, 
<laughs> You're on YouTube holding genitals. I know. Yes. <laughs> Let's do the. Uh, what am I doing? Thank you. Are you going to do memory plans? Mm -hmm. After. I'll do that next. Let's do... Alright. Okay, the problem with your slides is they look horrible and they don't look like this. But you can get the gist from your slides. So this is a uterus. You saw me click it. The way I'd know that's a uterus is there's a white space up here, that's the lumen where the baby would live, and then you see these long, we call them snakes, but they're not snakes. These are glands, right? This is the endometrium. This is the part that you would grow and slough off during your ovulatory cycle. So if you see a white space with these funny looking snake-like things, that's your uterus. That's the endometrium of the uterus. Looking at that picture, can you guess for me which parts of stratum functionalis versus the stratum basalis? Can you see a difference? The I can. And the bottom part. Yell when you think about the basalis. stratum basale. Mm. You're saying that's the basale? Yes. Not yet. Not here? Yeah, now. Yeah. So there's no line in the sand. It's not like in skin where you just draw a line. But you can tell that this part looks different than this part in terms of density and shape. So the stratum functionalis is about here up, stratum basalis is about here down, right? But it's no, there's no magical spot, right? You can kind of see it. So if I do another <coughs> picture, uterus again, I have white space, I have worms, okay? Functionality would be from here to about, uh, about maybe about yay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basalis would be about here to here. Hey! What's this? This muscle. What's that? Myometrium. So you want to look for uterus and be able to figure out kind of vaguely where the line is. It's kind of a judgment call, right? But unfortunately, your slides are pretty bad for that. Let's do. This one. What is that? Uterine tube. Uterine tube or oviduct fallopian tube. How would I know that if I saw that? It looks like a snowflake. Very good. So oftentimes it has a snowflake. It doesn't always, but looks as if like. You're also going to notice it has muscle. How much muscle compared to a vast deferens? Less. Less. So it's a tube, right? It has muscle, but it doesn't have as much as a vast deferens. Mm -hmm. It also has this funny snowflakey kind of appeal to it. Vast deferens does not. Now just to show you that it varies somewhat, I mean the vast, uh, the oviducts on the right. So again, you can tell the tube, you can tell there's muscle, but not as much, and then this is sort of strange. So it varies a lot, but you get the idea: snowflake with a little bit of muscle. So what's that and what's that on the left? That's a vein. That's a vein. That's a two thirty two word. It's a vein. Really? So let's zoom in on my uterine tube, shall I? Yeah. I shall. So what do you call the snowflake? Folded mucosa. Folded mucosa. Who else had mucosal folds? Male gland, fixed oh, fluid, two know. words, sounds like <laughs> the middle vesicle. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we have mucosal folds or fold of mucosa. If you look carefully, there'd be some cilia on there. You can barely, barely figure out that they're there. But there'd be cilia to help move the, the sperm and egg along. Right? So again, it looks similar to the male tubes, but it's just different looking in terms of the structure. Then we're going to do our last one for the girl slides. This would be an esophagus if it wasn't in the wrong place of your body. Vagina. Baby. That's a vagina because it has what kind of tissue? Vagina. And usually, but not always, they have this waviness to them, and then you have these mucosal exudate glands like that. But it looks like an esophagus because same kind of things for protection. So stratified squamous epithelial tissue. Okay. Every time. And one more. There's a close-up. Stratified squamous. Kind of waving. Do you get those? All right. So let's let's do breasts. Let's do boobs. All right. Get a model of something here. Alright, let's do this one. Let's 
do number three. That's a nipple. Let's do number one. There we go. That's a colored ring. Let's do kind of five. What are fives? The glands. The ducks. Lobes. So you want to think lungish, right? So lobes are each chunk, for lack of a better word. So here's sort of a chunk. Here's sort of a chunk. Here's sort of a chunk. So they're lobes, just like in your lungs. Oh, that's right? what it's pointing. I was pointing at the coming I mean, well, it's yeah. about the yellow it's stuff. Kind of. It's not supposed to be the yellow stuff. It's supposed to be the white stuff. Yeah. So then Maybe. let's look. In each chunk, you notice there's little regions. Like here's a lump. Here's a lump. Here's a lump on the bigger lump. What do you call smaller lumps on big lumps? Lobules. Lobules. Same thing. So we went from the mountain range to the group of hills. <laughs> then. If you look carefully, each one of these has little teeny circles on it. What do you think those would be if that were a lung? Alveoli. What do you call them in the breast? Alveoli. Exactly the same. They're sacs. <coughs> so the lobes have lobules, the lobules have circles. Right? So each rock on the mountain in the Cascade Range. Another way to look at it, this is a really kind of ugly, strange model that works. If I zoom in on that. So if it were me, yeah. this is sort of a lobe, this is sort of a lobe, that's sort of, yeah, pomegranate kind of lobe. Let's say, well, then this is a lobule, this is a lobule, that's a lobule because it's three things in one. And then each circle, I would say, is an alveolus. Right? That's kind of how I interpret it. You can get people arguing about that. But you're basically breaking down the bumps. Then let's see, oh, hey, what's this big funny tube? A differs duck, which is actually a milk duck, is perfectly allowed to say milk duck, but milk. this is a doctor word, right? Like differs. <laughs> the hard thing to catch on to is right here. This one's hard to see because of the color. Sinus? But yes, there's a sinus. Let me zoom out here a little bit. What number four would that? Look at number four. Yeah, so it's closer to the yeah, nipple. Right. So each milk duck comes down, there's a little teeny sinus or space. Or each duck before the nipple. That's the closest you get to an udder in a primate. It's right there. Those are the sinuses. Would you accept milk sinus? Would you accept milk duck? <laughs> Depends on my mood, but officially no. <laughs> <laughs> That's how argumentative I'm going to be that day. Right. Probably Yeah, it depends on how much caffeine I had, so. How much chocolate. You know. Is that Diet Coke? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Reese's peanut butter cups and diet coke, breakfast of champion. All right. Noted. So, oh, one more thing. What's this white tissue that looks like it's hanging down? Suspense. That's three ligaments. That's what holds them up, is the, the ligaments basically from your chest muscles hang them down. Right. So, so what's six? Six? Oh, I was going to say pectoralis. Versus six. Fascia. Let's see what's that. Yeah, so as gravity wears out or whatever, you just, like any ligament, you can stretch it. Over time, they just sag more. Breast lift is doing exactly like that. Yep. yep. Or if you strengthen the chest muscles here, as they contract, they'll pull the ligaments a little harder. But yeah, if gravity is ligaments stretch; they tend not to want to go back. Mm -hmm. So that's the reality of it. So today we're supposed to look at a slide of this. All right, let's do mammary gland slides. slide you have, there's some variability here, so don't overanalyze. But this is a breast tissue, mammary gland, boob, whatever you call it. And these circles represent the actual glands or alveoli making the milk. So everything you see as background is just connective tissue or fat. The milk is actually these things. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at those circles, and I'm going to like 
gut reaction? Are they kind of big or little compared to everything else that's there? So the larger filled space that's with the glands, is yep. that just a really large gland or is that like a duct? That's going to be a duct. That's going to be a okay. tube. So compared to everything else, they seem like there's a lot of them or a few of them? A few. 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 Seem big or small, kind of. Small. They're kind of small. So this this be an inactive or not lactating one. You're not making milk. What you want to do is take a picture of that with your head, right? And then compare it to this one here. What do you notice? There's a lot. A lot more glands. They're bigger. There's more of them. They're shoved everywhere, and you're compressing the other tissue. So as I as you milk more, these get bigger. Hence, there's their larger size, right? You can see that they're producing more fluid. There's just obviously there's more activity, so lactating, right? The problem is you can end up with ones that look kind of in between. Like that one, it looks like it's active. Right, now J-Doc says it's inactive. If I looked at that, I would probably say active just because I know how inactive tends to look. So I understand that there's, you can do that. I'm not overly concerned with how precise you are. But here's one that's actually lactating. Those are huge, right? Here's the milk, right? Huge alveoli. Taking up the whole stinking thing, right? So basically, the size of the gland should increase as the activity goes up. So on your slide, you're going to see something that's not quite like this. You're probably going to see something like maybe something like this versus something like that. If you can make that distinction, then you understand the difference. Make sense? Okay. So what I'm going to do for just a couple minutes. I'm going to randomly hit you with a slide, because I know that's where you want to start. And we're going to do some slide naming playing. In just a second, you get the page. I'm going to go right here. Options for tubes? Epididymis. Test this epididymis. Which one? Epididymis. Epididymis. Because I have big tubes, only one layer in the ring, lots of sperm, there's lots of white space. So that's not a test. This test would have multiple layers. Be really tight. So Aren't those like those sperms there in the interstitial there? Yeah, sperm. They're like actually moving around there. Yeah. No, that's just. I don't know what that is. They shouldn't be out there, no. They should be here. They got out of the I got the active activator. You got the activator. That's two. Draw speed. Low magnification, so it's a little different. That's this. Lots of circles. Let me zoom in on that. Oh, that's got a coastal fold. Oh, no. It does have a coastal fold, doesn't it? This is a seminal vesicle. It'll look like that. Seminal vesicle. Like a sponge. Like a sponge. Uh -huh. so here's my mucosal fold. Here's my smooth muscle. That's my sponge. That's easier to see. That's the sponge. Seminal vesicle. It's the gland behind your body. Sponge. Let's try. It's a It's testes. It is a testes. Very good. Oh, wow. So, let me play with that one for a second. I'm going to ask you something specifically about it. Yeah, it looks like a evil man. One of those cups and seat things. Dandelion. So, when you say to test this, though, would you accept some of the first two? Yes. Plus, yes. So, where my mouse is pointing, that cell there. Interstitial. Daniel, yes. Interstitial cells or Leydig cells. Right, the ones that are between the circles. Right. 
Too easy, Drill Sergeant. Yeah. No problem. You gotta tip your head sideways. <laughs> That's a penis! That's a penis. Oh. Right? Angry clown. All right? <laughs> so let's name this red line here. Tunica Abu Jinia. Very good. Very easy. All right. Let's try. Let's try, try. Name the organ. Can't look to the left. It's a uterus. How did you know? I see squiggling on the wormy uterine glands. Here's my baby lives here. Here's my endometrium, so all this must be the myometrium. Very good. So look for those worm type things. Spaghetti, some people call it, whatever. We'll try this one. Let's do. Oh, where'd that take? Oh, okay, I'll just want that. I don't want that one. Hold on. I don't hate it for that one. I hate it for that one, too. Oh, yes. But you're going to hate me for all three of these. Okay. Okay. You're gonna hate me for this picture. Oh boy. It's it's not. I. The reason you're gonna hate me is I wish this part were thicker by a little bit. It looks like that, but it's not. Uterine. Uterine tuber of a duck. Normally this would be thicker. That's the snowflake, but they didn't have a thick enough line up. That's the snowflake. Which looks like a vessel. Kind of. That's a skill. Let's try. Close up. The giant is in the south again. Where is that? Insert a joke down. Right. right. Oh, uh, and the. So. No, the glance of the breast. The boob it is. It's inactive. It's pretty much inactive because notice that these are kind of few, not really, I mean it's hard to tell without any other option, but I see there's very few of them. There's a lot of background. I'm going to say inactive memory gland. Make sense? Very good. So, use the rest of your time as you see fit. Lecture exam next week, lab exam in two weeks. And class is over three Fridays from now. Say that again. Class ends.